I know what you're thinking. What has Yorkshire Water got to do with farming? Let's talk about it. Hi everyone, welcome to the Science Behind with me, Guy, back again for another episode and I've got my colleague Beth with me. Hi Beth. Hello. So Beth, what do you do for Yorkshire Water? So I'm a water quality scientist on the clean water side, so I look at optimisation of chemicals and the raw water to make sure that you're getting clean and safe drinking water. Perfect. So what are we doing today then? We are here at a farm in North Yorkshire to look at sustainable landscapes and what they're doing with sustainable agriculture. Perfect, shall we have a look around? Let's go. So I'm here with Andrew. Would you like to tell me a little bit about your role at Yorkshire Water? I'm a catchment strategy manager at Yorkshire Water, which means I'm responsible for developing and implementing our catchment management programme, primarily to uh, protect and enhance raw water quality and that ranges from peatland restoration in our upland catchments down to the work that we're doing with uh, Joe and the farming community in the lowlands. So could you tell me a bit more about the Sustainable Landscapes project? Um, we're on Joe's farm here today. Uh, Joe joined the Sustainable Landscapes uh, programme uh, a couple of years ago. The Sustainable Landscapes uh, project came about from an issue that we and other water companies had with the active ingredient in slug pellets which is metaldehyde, uh, but rather than take a, um, a more regulatory approach to try and ban uh, metaldehyde, we sought to engage with the farming community on a whole farm business enterprise and see if there was a, a more sustainable and resilient way of farming whereby if we all play fair, we all win. But also uh, some of the beans that Joe's growing here um, he's not using insecticides on that because we've planted these, what we call the functional field margins, uh, which is a whole range of different um, crops at the, uh, at the side of uh, the field. And they provide a habitat for all sorts of insects from parasitic wasps to ladybirds. And they can fly into the crop and eat uh, all the aphids that otherwise would have been sprayed with insecticides. So Andrew, should we go take a look at another part of the farm? Yeah, absolutely. So we're here with Steve from Future Food Solutions and he's going to talk a little bit more about sustainable landscapes to us. It's a really close relationship between soil health and water quality. If farmers are able to farm in a particular way where they're building soil organic matter and they're farming in a way which is very kind of soil focused rather than output focused, the actual benefit is not just the food that's being grown but it's also the, the, the customers of Yorkshire Water because water quality improves as the soil improves. Basically, that soil becomes the first layer of, of filtration for your water quality system. So again, it's a, it's a huge benefit for both farmers, customers, and people buying food. Steve, could you just elaborate as to why this sort of program is important to our customers? What are the sorts of things that improving soil health actually delivers? The, the program, basically, Andrew, is, is, enables farmers to think differently about how they manage soil. One of the big problems that we've got at the moment is, is nitrates in, in, in a lot of the arable areas. Nitrates come about because of nitrogen that's used on the field. Now, if we can use less nitrogen, it's less nitrates. If we can make sure that the nitrogen stays in the field rather than disappears off into the aquifer or into rivers, then obviously the farmer wins and the environment wins. We're very keen to keep that nitrogen level down if we can. So we work on nitrogen use efficiency, which means we're trying to maximize yield with as less nitrogen as possible. Improved soil makes that possible. Steve, do you, do you think there are any other beneficiaries, if you like, to um, reducing nitrogen in the environment? Less nitrogen means less carbon in the, in, the, in the food and drink supply chain. So clearly there's a real beneficiary in the food and drink companies buying commodities that who are producing the grain or, or the potatoes or wh whatever's being grown on the fields that we're working on. So we're now in a situation where it's not just about soil health, water quality, we really are benefiting the environment and reducing the carbon footprint of farming at the same time. So I'm here with Joe. Could you tell us a little bit more about your background and working on the farm? Yeah, so I've been farming for the last 15 years, uh, born and raised on the farm, farm in partnership with my dad and my partner. Um, 
Farm's a mixed farm. We have a bit of everything, combinable crops. We grow beans, oilseed rape, wheat, barley, um, and a few interesting things like canary seed, linseed, and um, we have sheep and cattle. So could you tell us a bit more about how you became involved in the Sustainable Landscapes programme? Yeah, so a, um, a local farmer uh, got in touch and asked if I wanted to be, wanted some free cover crop seed and I obviously jumped at the chance and through that uh, discovered there was a, a great community of local farmers who wanted to farm in a more sustainable way uh, and it really snowballed from there. So Joe, could you tell us a little bit about what's going on in this field here? Yeah, so this was a crop of wheat and about three weeks ago before harvest we air seeded mustard and tillage radish um, because one of the main problems we have in this part of the world is that in a late harvest trying to plant cover crops, um, if they're planted in late August or September, they don't really have a long enough growing window. Um, so we wanted to get as much efficiency out of them as possible. So through Yorkshire Water, we sow these into the wheat. Yeah, so the wheat was cut about a week ago and these plants will be about this big. And as soon as the wheat's off, the light comes in and these will grow away now and hopefully they'll be up here before we drill the next crop into them. Oh, amazing. So you spoke earlier about incorporating sheep into your arable practices. Could you talk a little bit more about that now? Yeah, so, so if we're going to plant any spring cropping, historically the, the ground might be bare over winter. Um, so what we've done here, like in the other field with the cover crops, is we've air seeded stubble turnips and Westerwold ryegrass. So the air seeder is a avidex spreader, so that's an, it spreads seed evenly across 24 meters. It's mounted on a sprayer. Um, we, we sow it into the standing crop here. Um, it's a very cheap way of establishing this crop. Um, and in a year like this where we've had plenty of rain, it's, it's as good as any at establishing them. Um, so yeah, in December, hopefully, we'll have um, some food for the sheep. So, Andrew, could you tell us a little bit more about any future initiatives for the Sustainable Landscapes projects? One thing I'm, I'm quite keen to do is to continue to um, expand uh, the um, spatial location of, of the projects. The original one, the three pilot areas of, of York, has gone from 16,000 hectares up to about 26,000 hectares. About 12% of the arable land in Yorkshire is now involved in one or more of the Sustainable Landscapes programme, which is tremendously exciting. I would say that we, we can't do this without the likes of Joe. We really need the agricultural community to work with us in this collaboration and partnership, because if, if they're not interested and they're not involved, we, we, we cannot make a difference. So, Beth, how's your day been? It's been really interesting and insightful. I've learned a lot of amazing things, such as cover crops, which Joe's using with his barley at the moment, and it helps with soil erosion and leaching of chemicals. But he can also use it later in the year for the sheep, just to help with the grasslands recovering over winter and giving the, food, the sheep a source of food. Amazing. So yeah, if you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends all about the science behind, Leave us a comment in the section below if you've got any thoughts or any questions about sustainable farming and all of that stuff. And yeah, we'll see you on the next video. But until then, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Beth. Bye. Bye.